Okay, so this is just a brief overview of the topics you should have investigated yesterday um, through your internet research and reading up in the textbook. A couple of key ideas just to make sure you understood. Um, magnetism, that's what we're going to be talking about this chapter. Um, it was originally thought that magnetism was totally unrelated to electricity. Um, we had lodestones, which were sort of magnetized rocks, and they found that they behaved uh, um, strangely. And it wasn't until it was noticed in, um, in 1820 that uh, an electric current running through a wire could actually get a compass to divert. And so then there was a realization that electricity and, comp and uh, magnetism were somehow related. Um, later on, we found that m magnets were uh, able to exert forces on current-carrying wires, and that led to all kinds of new, exciting technologies. So magnetic poles, um, every magnet has two poles, a north pole and a south pole, and even if you break a magnet in half, it's going to break into two uh, magnets that ha each has a north and a south pole. Um, to date, there has been no discovery of a magnetic monopole. Um, in electricity, you can have you know, a positive charge and a minus charge, but in magnetism, you can only have north and south poles that go together. You can have forces with magnetic poles, just like you do with electric um, charges, where positive charges, two like charges, will repel. In the same way, a north pole and a south pole are attracted, um, and um, similar poles will... Um, repel. So two north poles, when you bring them close to each other, they will push each other apart. As with electricity, the strength of their force is inversely proportional to their separation. So it works the same way um, with electricity and magnetism. Um, so we can get magnetic forces. Electric charges can be isolated, but we can't with magnetic poles. That's what we just talked about. So if you cut them in half, you get smaller and smaller. You still always have two poles, a north and a south. Magnetic field lines are actually really easy to see um, when you're looking at a magnet because you can put these little iron filings, you can get these little teeny bits of iron, and if you sprinkle them around a magnet, you can see that the way the lines of, of force line up. So uh, you get these magnetic field lines surrounding magnets, much like you would around electric fields, like if you had an electric dipole of a plus charge and a minus charge. These lines would look very similar. Take a look at these two and try to imagine. I'm going to pause the recording. Uh, try to imagine. Try to figure out. Um, well, I guess you can see it on there from distance. You can't see it, but if you look close, you can. Um, the way do you see the traction of the lines between the north and south poles? So, for example, from here to here, you see an attractive force. You see the lines tightly together um, because the north and the south are attracted. But here, you see this sort of repulsion. When you have a south and a south, the lines of force tend to be pushing each other apart. So you get this repulsive force here and here and here and here. Okay, so magnetic field lines. When we're drawing the magnetic field lines around a compass, the standard is that the lines are going to come out of the north pole and go into the south pole. Uh, if you place a compass in the vicinity of a magnet, um, then the little compass arrows are going to point in the direction of the magnetic field. So if the field lines are going, um, whichever way the arrow is going, that would be the direction um, that the compass would align itself. The Earth's magnetic field is actually created by little moving charges within the um, core of the Earth, and it's not fully understood. Um, scientists are still studying um, how these magnetic fields are caused or created, but they have a general idea that we have these molten metals beneath the Earth's surface that are moving very slowly. So the speed of these moving charges is about a millimeter per second, but it's this mo motion of charges that is generating this magnetic field. We know that there have been reversals of the magnetic field historically. The magnetic field of the Earth is not stable. Um, we can see by looking at um, layers of rock, we can see where the direction of the magnetic field has changed or shifted uh, throughout time. 
We've had about 20 reversals in the last 5 million years, the most recently 780,000 years ago. Uh, it's impossible to predict the reversal because the, there is, it doesn't seem to be periodic. We can't see any sort of pattern. But we have seen a 5% decrease in the strength of the magnetic field last 100 years, so we're wondering if there might be a reversal coming soon, which would wreak havoc with our navigation systems. Moving charges are what create magnetism. Um, and at the micro level, when you're thinking of what's going on inside a ferromagnetic material, what you have are little moving charges that you might say to be spinning. And in most materials, these little moving charges, they just completely cancel each other out, so you don't get any sense of a magnetic, um, magnetic field. But some um, have materials where the, these are spinning electrons... Um, they don't cancel out, and so that would be in iron and nickel and cobalt. Those are among the most famous ferromagnetic materials. And what you get in these magnetic materials is what we we'll call these little magnetic domains. So it's like if this is a big section of, of um, ferromagnetic material, you look in one little partition, and within that little partition, there would be a whole bunch of little electron spins that are all lined up. So you'd say this one little domain it seems to be pointing in one direction. And then next door to that, it would be in a slightly different direction. Now this randomness would indicate that you don't really have any magnetism going on. But if you can align these domains and get them all pointing in the same direction, then you can create uh, a pretty strong magnet. This is a little interesting tidbit. Mag the magstripe on your credit card has millions of little magnetic domains um, held together and, and your card readers are, are pulling out that magnetic information. So if you swipe your credit card over a magnet, you're going to demagnetize it and mess up your credit card and it won't work anymore. That also works with BART tickets. So uh, magnetic domains, the difference between ordinary iron and iron magnet is just that the alignment of their domains. Uh, typically domains are randomly aligned, like we showed in that picture a minute ago. But then if you bring a strong magnet nearby, and it's, you can almost... Like if you, if you sweep your um, ferromagnetic material with a strong magnet, you can kind of shake up those domains to get them to align with each other, and then the, the domains kind of grow in size as they become aligned. Uh, you might have seen this if you played around with paper clips or with nails. Um, if you hold them and, and get, you can actually magnetize the domains within a paper clip or a series of nails by having them um, attached to a strong magnet. Um, once you have disconnected them, like to, you pull the paper clips off the magnet, the paper clips will stick together momentarily, but if you were to drop them or warm them up at all, then those little magnetic domains inside the paper clip will quickly reshift and, and become random again and lose their magnetism. So permanent magnets are made by placing iron or iron alloys in strong magnetic fields. Um, by strong magnetic fields, you can actually generate with electric fields. We'll find out about that later. Or you can just bring a really strong magnet nearby and kind of stroke it to get the, the, the different um, domains to align. And once they're aligned, then you've created some, uh, a, mag a ferromagnetic material can become magnetic. And you can see as those um, domains are aligned, when you cut the magnet, you're always going to have one end with arrows going out of the... Uh, um, so on this side, you're going to get them coming out and going around... Um, and this way, you're going to go that way. So you cut them in half, you can see that you're always going to have two poles. So if you take a magnet um, and you drop it, you can shake up its domains and it will lose its magnetic magnet ability. And that concludes this introduction.